You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. All I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's the Bagman, the Moon Commander. I got Jeremy here with XR Phone. How you doing today, fam? Man, super good, man. I'm happy I could finally get up here on the, uh, how do you call it, the mothership. <laughs> yes, sir. Right now we're chilling on the uh, the islands for the island party coming up. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I'm going to get my pina colada soon. <laughs> So what we got going on today, man? You got the XR phone. You're building some nice, cool projects on the XRP Ledger. Yeah, so I wanted to just kind of open this up to more of like a kind of just an AMA sort of just like just different questions that I've seen people talking about related to XR phone. Okay. And uh, yeah, basically, XR phone, if you're not familiar with it, um, the website is www.xrphone.app. And it was a originally a proof of concept for the Ripple XRP Labs, or excuse me, Ripple, the Ripple XRPL hackathon for 2021. So this is a few months ago. And uh, I put this project together because I wanted to bridge the legacy kind of phone system and the new crypto digital assets together. And XRP is like super awesome, as many people already know that watch this channel. And uh, it's just super cheap, infinitesimal fees, green, um, fun to work with, and the community is growing. And it enables super interesting creative uh, utility and use cases. And that's what XR Phone is. And if you haven't seen the demo, I know that on your um, channel, I think I've seen you put the like thing up and maybe... We can show people that again because I don't want to like rehash that if they've already seen it. But if if, if they want to see it, they can. And then um, more importantly, I wanted to talk a little bit about the kind of the, the token that's going to get airdropped hopefully soon and um, kind of how that's going to play into the ecosystem for XR phone and some of the things we're doing to make it uh as fair as possible for the distribution, the community distribution to everybody who uh, wants to participate. Awesome. And before we get into all that, how about we just do a quick introduction, like your background and how you got into coding, jumped into XRP? For sure. So if I were to rewind when I was very, very little, like a tiny little kid, you know, my dad probably, you know, got the computer out there through the dial-up connection. And when you used to be, when you picked up the phone, <laughs> hear the thing going and if someone in your house found out that you lifted the thing you know the phone and then you screwed their their download because you like didn't realize that's how it was and so that was when i was very little a couple of years old but i never took the programming particularly so as serious i was more into like networking like network um security type stuff and just messing with those things um but then later on i when i'm maybe around 2016 ish I started saying, you know, I want to, I want to do this as a professional career. I want to be a developer. That's what I really think I'll be happy to do. And uh, I kept pursuing it and I've been involved with different startups uh, in different sorts of fields. It could be in esports. It could be in uh, automation for di different sorts of uh, email marketing solutions and tools like this and uh, online ordering, all kinds of different things. But the XRP I got uh, attracted to back in 2020, so not that long ago. There's, I know there's some people here that are like really OG that have been knowing about the XRP since kind of its inception, okay. but I had I didn't get into it at that point. I actually, funny enough, there was a I, I had bought some Bitcoin back in like I think 2015. It was like maybe three or four hundred bucks. And it was, it was only the reason I bought it was because there was like this bootleg website that somebody had told me about called superchillin.com. It got taken down eventually. And this guy had a, a Bitcoin as a payment method. So I was like, hey, let me use this thing. So I went on Coinbase, bought a, like a little bit of Bitcoin to send this guy. Should have bought more. Did not. <laughs> And then clearly, um, I found out later on in 2020, I was like, wait, I think I have like just a little bit of Bitcoin there. So I checked. Of course, it went up significantly, not a lot, but it was like pretty crazy. I didn't have that much of it. 
but it just kind of was like making me realize that these these assets um, in this whole this, this evolution that we're we're in has uh, definitely progressed the last few years. Um, XRP, I don't know. It's a rabbit hole, as you know. <laughs> it's just this crazy matrix type rabbit hole, and the deeper you decide to go down it, and the more you want to research, and the more you want to look at the uh, interconnected, just like relationships and just all the different things. Um, it just, I think it's more, mostly probably just got me, it just gets just interesting. You know, I think maybe I'm like, maybe I'm in some weird deep level, I just am into those sort of things, just trying to uncover the so-called truth. Man, if you got in like earlier before, it was way crazier than that. Like there's oh. a whole bunch of stuff going on that would have had you deep down the rabbit hole, but <laughs> We're glad to have you on the XRP Ledger building uh, awesome apps. Um, we can go thank ahead and get you. to the juicy stuff if you want to now. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, so um, related to the uh, first thought, I want to address the, uh, the, the token for XR phone. So on the white paper, there's some basic overview that explains kind of what we're thinking of doing with the token as we build out the ecosystem. Um, the most exciting thing for me, what I want to do with the token specifically, is utilizing it for kind of allowing merchants or businesses to create uh, NFTs using the XLS 20D, um, which is starting to get, it's gonna, it should be getting rolled out quite soon. And the concept behind this is that if you're a business and you want someone to utilize XRP to make payments from their mobile phone, right? Or if they want to call in and use their wallet to do that then basically there needs to be some, hopefully some sort of like reason why they'd want to do, do that. You know, of course, some people are super into XRP and digital assets and they think it's so cool, but what can you really do to like make it like even more enticing? So the concept is that utilizing the token, merchants will be able to go and manage and create special digital um, collectibles or special like, let's call them digital coupons or special items, so to speak, that will be non-fungible tokens that essentially get airdropped to the person who's calling in, the customer. And those who can be retained by that customer. And then when you have these different things that are retaining, like special things you, you've accumulated with that business, then that will enable you in future purchases to receive special discounts, for example. And this is just one concept. But in order to facilitate this sort of kind of capabilities and features, we're going to use the the tokens. And that's just one thing. Other types of use cases for the token are, for example, if I'm a business, I might want to be able to have like a personal greeting, or I want to go and get a special custom inbound number. To have these sort of types of capabilities, you're going to need to have the token because this is what's going to fuel the different sorts of, let's call the system, because the system will require different so-called credits in order to be able to make these, these new actions work. And there's a variety of other things, but those are just some of the initial concepts. That being said, during the uh, one of the things I want to address for anyone who's aware or that's learning about this, there's we want to make sure that everybody is fair. There's a fair distribution, right, of the airdrop. And in order to, to do that, um, you know, I found out after that, and I, I kind of knew already slightly, but I didn't realize the extent of it. So as you may know, there's lots of people who write what's called bots. And these bots are essentially like automated scripts, essentially, that enable people to, I would say, game the system. What do I mean by that? So if there's like a special token that somebody wants to receive because they really believe in the project or they like what their project's doing or the project's like building out utility and the ecosystem on the XRP ledger, you're super down with it, you love it, then you might say, hey, I want to take part in that, 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 um, that airdrop. The problem is that there's people that are on the system that are creating, let's say, hundreds and hundreds of accounts, thousands of accounts, and they're essentially trying to get all the tokens, which doesn't make it fair for the community at large. And for me personally, now when I found out the extent of this, how bad it truly was, it made me want to like slow down and see if there was a way to probably create some sort of um, new kind of solution to remedy this problem, because I personally want to make sure that when we distribute these tokens, that we can try to do the best we can to make sure that as many people as possible can participate in the most fair way possible. And so we did the initial snapshot number one, which already took place. 
Um, and if you if you use the uh, the AirDrop checker tool, we made a little um, link uh, tool on the XR phone site, and you might be able to drop the link later. But this is basically contains currently everybody who is eligible for that first snapshot. And what do I mean by this? What I mean was initially we allocated 65% of the entire token supply to the community. We just want to make sure everybody gets them. We're just giving them out. Now, that being said, of that amount of token supply, we actually filled up quite quickly what are known as trust lines. For the people who don't know what a trust line is, a trust line is basically if you have an account on XRP Ledger and you want to be able to go and interact with another with a, with a particular token, then you would establish what's called a trust line to what's called the token issuer. The token issuer in this case is XR Phone. There's a variety of other projects right, that have their own issuer account. And so long story short, um, there was many, many um, trust lines filled up very quickly. And I was super grateful <laughs> and I'm super, it was super awesome. There was like 65,000 or 70,000 trust lines. It's an absolutely like amazing. But the thing is when we later, I found out from people that are in the XRP community, when they, when they looked at it, they said, Hey, we know that based on like our own scripts that we run, we can see that there's like a significant portion of these accounts that are actually what are called farmers, right? Or bots. And their flag does that. Now, the thing is, there's people who keep coming to the XR phone, Twitter and Discord and saying, hey, I was flagged as a farmer. I'm not a farmer, this and that. I feel your pain. I do. And I, I don't want, I didn't want anyone to be um, accidentally flagged. That wasn't like, that wasn't what we want that to happen at all. But to utilize the kind of the larger kind of uh, list, which had 135,000, 135,000 <laughs> addresses that were considered for whatever the, the, the person building this, this list, they, through their process, they were able to determine that those what they considered not a perfect science. That's what they considered. It got flagged. So we used that to curate against the, the, the initial snapshot that we took, which was like a week or so ago. And that brought us down to, I think, 30,000 30, or something. We cut, the, we cut the thing by a half, which is significant. So is it perfect? No. It's not perfect, but it's the best we could do with what we had using that that list as like a as a tool. And so, before I continue, I, I want to I'm going to let you talk also because I I keep I I like, I like to talk too much. So. <laughs> One quick thing on that too: how being a farmer and a bot, like say regular people, what like qualifies you to be a farmer and a bot? You know, honestly, so there's a um, there's a particular um, user that is on Twitter. And I think it's, I have to look up his name, but it's basically, I think it's like uh, .nz or something or ripple, ripple it in NZ. He's like, he's, I talked to him. He seems like a super nice guy. And he basically generates this, this list, right? Now, I don't know the exact, personally, I don't know the exact um, like kind of cases, cases that he uses, the conditions to like evaluate what would consider someone. But this is, seems to be like currently with the current XRPL ecosystem, the way it is for what's called non-authorized trust lines, people who just want to connect to a trust line, this seems to be the de facto way to like assess if something's considered a, a so-called farmer. And a lot of those people, unfortunately, might have somehow got flagged, right? So I don't know the exact specifics. Okay. He actually did mention on Twitter that if someone was on there and they know for a fact they shouldn't have been, that you can contact him and he'll actually remove you. That being said, let me just fast forward then. So that being said, um, I personally have like made it a mission to like try to stop this from happening. <laughs> I don't want this to happen, period. That I want this to be done with. And so um, what I actually kind of put a stop was, to the airdrops too, because yeah. they, had, they had to do a whole different process now with the airdrops because of that. Yeah the, whole, yeah, the whole thing is just <laughs> wacky. So the thing is basically... Um, for me personally, just because I think like, I'm a person who believes in like fairness and as best I can, again, level I playing apologize field. it somehow got flagged. We want a level playing field, right? Yeah, level playing <laughs> field. If we're going to do a, a community distribution where everybody just gets some of the tokens, let's try our best, even if it's not a perfect science, to try to make it so everybody is a human that's actually interacting with this. Like, I need to make sure that if you want to, to participate and get these that you are a human being. You're not a, a robotic automated script that some guy wrote that has control of like a thousand accounts. We don't want those people. 
So what I did was I did some initial research and I found that there was first um, very little, um, there's very little, cap- like, there was very little options really that I could find that would solve this problem. And the first one, um, there was a, a guy that actually had worked on um, something that seemed extremely interesting. And I was going to use it for XR phone to do the secondary snapshot for the people who are not yet participating. And um, basically, long story short, um, I saw what he was doing. It was cool. But I think that I could actually take it up a notch to another level. So what I've done is I built something called Trustwall. And Trustwall is made by the XR phone kind of team so to speak. I'm the lead dev, but Trustwall is going to be what we're going to use. That's the goal. XR phone will be using this to finish up the second snapshot. And when that's finally complete and we have, and and, and let me just preface this. There's like, let's say there's 35% remaining or 30% of a gap to fill. And we want those to be ultimately human beings, real people. But we also want to make sure people are not making multiple claims, right? We want to try to reduce that also. Yeah, and that's kind of tricky with the current current way things are. Um, so basically, uh, Trustwall is going to be a solution that will be embedded into the Sum wallet. You'll need to be using Sum. If you don't use Sum, I apologize. We won't you won't be able to participate. If you are, that's awesome. We're currently waiting for Sum, um, the XRPL or the XRP Labs guys that make the wallet. We're waiting for them to go through the application submission process. I'm hoping that they'll eventually accept it. We have to get the, all the little things, all the kinks out of it. So it's it's good. That's what we're waiting on. Once that's done, Trustwall will essentially enable you to load an X app directly in your wallet. And when you do that, you all you have to do is basically just scan the QR code for the, for in this case, the issuer, which is XR phone or whoever it will be in the future if they decide to use this. And um, basically what we do is we encrypt the, we encrypt like a signature. So we know that that's you. And we use what's called AES-256 encryption, which is like super, super strong, also known as military grade. So basically when we put that information on the ledger and we put that there, we know that if a bot or someone tries to go and like create a trust line, they can create trust line. Anyone create trust lines, have fun. But we can easily filter out the spam ones because we know that the only ones that we're going to look at are the ones that are exclusively signed by the trust wall system. And by utilizing trust wall, we also have a secondary like, capability, which is super important, which is by embedding it into the wallet, we're actually able to make sure that people can only claim one time. That's key. So what that means is that if you want to create five separate XRP accounts in your wallet, you can go do that. That's fine. Have fun. But when you go to the Trustwall app and you try to go and you try to add our thing, you can do that also. That's fine. But when we finally run the filter at the end to generate the snapshot, we're able to determine if you've already tried to do this on other accounts in that wallet. And we're going to block. We're not going to, we don't want to call it block. We're just going to exclude we're just gonna them, not count the other ones because you can't, you can't have more than one. That's why this is super important. And third, we're not going to use this right now, but I've also made sure that if a issuer in the future decides that they really, really want to be like extra, extra strict with it, we're not going to do that for this one, but you can. We're going to have it so you have to be potentially KYC already. So like if you're not KYC through the ZUM system, then you're not even going to be looked at. You'll get rejected even before it begins. That's an additional feature that can be toggled on or off. So what I want to do, and I think this Zoom call might end in a couple of minutes. So I'm going to try to minutes. make sure it doesn't. And I apologize. This is a quick demo. No one's ever seen this before. This app, again, I want to say it is not available. When I load this on here, if you guys see this little app and you say, well, <laughs> why can't I find it on the app store? It's not there. Yes, it's not there. We're going to make sure it's there, assuming that it gets approved. And when it does get approved, that will be amazing because XR phone is going to, as I said to you earlier, we're going to dog food this thing and we're going to be the first so-called beta to beta project to use Trustwall. And we'll all learn together how this works. And I'm going to pray that it works well. Because if it does, I think that this will solve the entire issue with all the junk, the spam trust lines. And then people can finally get real trust lines, a list for their snapshot, so to speak. So when you first go in here... You'll notice there's this thing called Trustwall. And I'm going to go in here. And because I've already opened it on mine, 
it's just going to drop right into the um, drop right into this screen here. Now, because this has already been opened, what normally you would see is on the about section, you would normally have this pop up first. Okay. So you're going to all be able to see this little tour guide. So people don't have to ask themselves, what the heck is trust law? <laughs> it doesn't really make sense. I, he I hear you, everybody out there. I tried to make it make sense because I said, okay, trust lines and a wall that you get blocked, right? Like a firewall, like on the internet and a trust wall for trust line, trust wall. We smashed together. Yeah, That's how the name came to be. And so the first thing you can see is someone's getting sniped. The person <laughs> is getting sniped. With the, yeah, the, 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 tr the trigger and the snipe. This person is considered a bot or a farmer, right? I don't know if they're real people or just code, but it doesn't matter. We're going to snipe them. They can go add them, but we're going to, they're, they're going to get filtered out at the end. So when you do this, it says it verifies and stops the trust line spam on the XRP ledger public blockchain. And then it says here that you have the secure verification, which is the trust lines added with trust wall. These are secure with an AES 256 to sound super cool and official <laughs> military grade. Okay, that's the encryption standard. This just means that since the, the blockchain is public, anybody who goes on there is going to try to go and say, oh, well, I'm going to like put my own there. I'm gonna, I, can, I can read what the, what the information shows. No, you cannot because you don't have the secret key to unlock the encryption. So it's impossible. Okay, only the only trust wall can do that. And then the third one is that there's issuer safety. So this is supposed to be a handshake between the issuer, which is like the person or the, the group or the project that has the token, and you, the real human being, not the robotic script that's trying to get a, tr <laughs> get a trust line. And so when you do this, you go to verify. And so what happens here is you can just go to where it says scan QR code. And I'm going to scan on my screen. I just scanned the uh, thing and you can see that it's doing an encryption here. And when it does the encryption, it just locks it. And you'll see here that it's now asking us to confirm if we want to, to like allow this trust line to be added. And you'll notice that the memo, this is key. This is like what you call a hexadecimal encoded um, memo. Now, the memo data itself is also encrypted with the AES-256. So anybody on the blockchain on XRP will see this. And they're going to say, wow, this is, doesn't make any sense, these letters and numbers. It should not make any sense. And even if you try to go and fat, like, like kind of force your own, like make your own, you can go have fun. It's impossible. It would take like billions of years with the current computers to try to go and, you know, figure out how to brute force an AES-256. So it's extremely difficult. Basically, it's impossible. Maybe one day we'll have quantum computers that can do that. But for now, I'm not stressing it. It should be <laughs> adequate for our XRPL projects. So then what you do is you just swipe this thing. And after you do that, all it's going to do is add the trust line. If you already have a trust line, it's just going to update it with the new uh, trust wall encryption. If you, you'll see, it's going to pop up and say, congrats, you successfully added. So that, that being said, if you're going to eventually, when we roll this out for the new, um, the new thing for the snapshot two for XR phone, if you already have a trust line, you technically can just do it again. If you're not yet eligible for the, the airdrop. And you should be good. If you're extra concerned, remove it and then go through here. But that shouldn't, you shouldn't need to do that, right? You can just go right through here and it will just update your current one and you should be good. But that's basically it. More details will be coming out and we'll announce that. And that's pretty much the current vibe. And so pretty much for the next airdrop, this is what you're going to be doing for the second airdrop? So to, just to make, make everybody know, there's, it has, there has not been an airdrop yet. This is going to be the first airdrop, but there's two snapshots. There's okay. snapshot one, which people are already either eligible or not. And we're going to do the second snapshot, which will use the trust wall tool. When it becomes available, we will announce those details. Once we complete the second snapshot, the whole accumulative snapshot one and two, that group together, all of them will then be able to receive the airdrop. And if, if we don't fill the remaining gap, the rest of it will just get added to the existing XR phone ecosystem allocation. That's awesome, man. XR phone. And we got trust wall now, double dipping. Uh, we're right. running out of time here, it looks like. But uh, yes, I'd love to bring you back on, brother. Any more updates you got? Snapshots. I'll leave all your links down below. Twitter links, all that too. Um, anything, last words you want to say before we get out of here? All I want to say is hope everybody's doing well and having incredible rest of your day appreciate you we'll catch you guys in the next one up here on the mothership for the moon party
Peace out, guys. I be getting bags till we blast off. Hate to stay mad, cause we popped off. Free that standard and drain that swamp. We that squad. Mothership launch way off radar. All them XRP tokens went off. Shout out, we say when, cause my son on lock. They try to hold us down, but we took that spot. BTC, what, baby, XRP. Yes. They're supposed to pop, 4th of July Gary knows the truth, when on TV then he lied